It was bitter cold in the dead of winter, January 11th, 1966. As a cold wind came down the western route main line of the Boston and Maine Railroad, cutting through the town of Exeter, New Hampshire, a town of about 7,500 people. It was just before 6 p.m. The only atmospheric sound in the town might have been cars at the Front Street or Main Street crossing, and diners in the nearby depot restaurant in the old Exeter station. A keen ear might have picked up the sound of a horn at Powder Mill Road, as an eastbound freight from Mechanicville, New York approached on its way to Rigby Yard in South Portland, Maine. Agent Joseph Mantagana locked up the Railway Express office, just south of the Exeter station, and got into his car heading off to visit his sick wife at the hospital. It would seem the decision to leave exactly at that moment saved his life. Then a bell at Front Street and Main Street, and the loud air horn of a bluebird diesel slapping the cold winter air. The diners might have perked up as they heard the diesel's approach and roar past the station, blowing for the Main Street crossing. The freight cars clattered past one, two, five, and then ten, fifteen, twenty, and twenty-five. As the fiftieth car passed the Railway Express office, just to the south of the station, all hell broke loose. Those in their homes around town thought it might have been a jet plane breaking the sound barrier, but it was, in reality, the continued screeching of metal against the track as car after car derailed. A hundred feet beyond the wreck, diners at the depot restaurant narrowly escaped death and injury, the station itself untouched by the wreck damage. As the cars came to a halt, their momentum stopped by the friction of metal on metal Stillness once again took over, and the reality of the situation set in. Seventeen freight cars, starting about fifty cars in the train, had derailed just before Exeter Station. The locomotives in the first forty-nine cars moved on to Portland, and the rear cars were retrieved and moved back down to Lawrence, Massachusetts. Within hours, wrecker crews had set down upon the wreck in the bitter cold of the night, they set about assessing the situation, the destroyed Railway Express office, and the 17 cars, five containing rock salt, three with soy meal, one empty propane car, seven loaded with coal, and perhaps the most concerning of all, one loaded propane car. Of great concern was a propane depot just feet from the wreck in the small yard just beyond Exeter Station. If there was an explosion, said Fire Chief Vincent Toland, it would have blown a quarter mile of Exeter off the map. Thankfully, by some miracle, there were no fatalities or injuries as a result of the wreck. The closest call had perhaps been 52-year-old agent Joseph Mantagana. Railroad brass was everywhere, and the cleanup crews had to deal with the cold weather, but thankfully, modern equipment sped things up quite a bit. The first order of business was keeping the line open, and in order to get trains past the wreck, the westbound main track was moved over and connected with a side track. Under slow orders, 150 car freights were able to get by without difficulty. For about a week, the depot area was an interesting place to visit, and a good many extra cups of coffee were served at Jerry's restaurant to warm up the cold bodies of the sightseers and the crews alike. The cause of the wreck was determined to be a broken wheel on a freight car. 
Nearly a month was necessary to put the roadbed back in shape. When warm weather came in April, the wreck area was reballasted with fresh rock and completely cleaned up. And the Railway Express Agency office, well, it was relocated on Vine Street, out of harm's way. <laughs> 